Thomas de la radio parang ng kukulu matarango hunguna ina salangge chama kasini deva France kiniga ina sola nongo radio baru kudo salangge chama yongo imana sola kala ang kangiti manna kiga kang te aman puri. Abonra ila bolino ane kintang ilum dunya sibiga kang na indo kandre kasni indi la bora wanona walum de patumora. Wen abonra pam Tu dois te Nede <laughs> Oh, I'm my worry, they got the yachine, the board do cana, no how the boardman do, don't go and see no do I'm on. I want to say good day for the moment. I say good day, I don't go, I don't go. I say, I can't know him, and I got more good. I go for the 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 good. I go the good. I go for the good. I I go to Uguay. I go to Uga and Nafu Bobotere. The Borgona guy said, Ture, oh, mammy, Borgibi. Ture, oh, mammy, young I didn't know her Ture Kulbono. No Kulborgi, Borgi, I order in me cans. The idea of Thomas and Kate with that cruise are your. Oh, Thank you. 
really appreciate the efforts you have made to come at a short notice. And particularly, I want to welcome those of you who have traveled a long way from the countries of the Sahel region, uh, also those who crossed an ocean to be with us uh, today. We all know what brings us together in this room. Again, erratic rains, poor harvest, and an estimated shortfall of over 2.5 million tons in food production drive food prices up, the human cost is massive, and we have not yet reached the peak of the crisis. The principal pays concerned are the Burkina Faso, the Cap Vert, the Côte d'Ivoire, the Gambie, the Ghana, the Guinea-Bissau, the Liberia, the Niger, the Senegal, and, bien entendu, the Mali. We would like really to concentrate the effort on current needs, but we would like also to look on the all issues that uh, make an impact on resilience. This is not the first time that such a crisis has hit this region, which faced a serious drought as recently as 2010. But there are things that are different this time, which are very important. National governments raised the alarm early, and the humanitarian community worked together to support early action. Then, of course, we have the North American One of the most important things that comes out uh, of this last meeting was the resilience point. It's trying to ensure that we build capacity so that the populations uh, can respond themselves uh, as much as possible in the first time at least uh, to uh, new and recurrent crises uh, so that we reduce in fact in a way the dependency of always to need to assist uh, from outside. ECHO is the humanitarian department of the European Union and it provides assistance to all those people who are affected by crisis or disasters. As such, it's one of the largest donors in the world. WFP is our major partner here uh, in, in Niger. We have uh, an, an important uh, number of uh, funds that are uh, going uh, through this partner to assist the population here. They are a very big operator who, of course, works with a lot of other uh, smaller partners, um, international as well as national uh, organizations, who will implement most of these activities. Now we are halfway in the crisis and we can see that our response has saved life. But we're not there yet. We need to continue. The crisis is not over. We have just taken more steps to mobilize even more funding for more sources. We talk about 15 million people who are at risk. And out of the 15 million people, 8 million are really dependent on assistance. If you invest in the growth of a child, if you avoid that a child becomes fully malnourished, you, in fact, invest in the future of a country. They are provided with the financial assistance, a cash contribution, which can be done in different ways. Some people uh, provide it directly, others do it even through mobile transfers. <laughs> vraiment en contact direct avec les enfants, en tout cas qui, qui vivent vraiment les problèmes réels au sein de ces cellules familiales. Ah, 
And the difference in 2011-2012 is that the international community used the early warning systems. We used the data, the preliminary data that we had in October and November of 2011 to develop an early response. We didn't wait until we had official surveys. We didn't wait until we saw nutrition centers overflowing with malnourished children. Early action was taken. That's the difference here. But not only that early action was taken, but that there's such a, a strong partnership between the government, the United Nations, the NGO partners, and the donors, such as ECHO and the European Commission. We all support early interventions 
to stop a, a crisis from becoming a humanitarian emergency. En 2011, cette crise que nous vivons aujourd'hui, lorsqu'on a fait une évaluation de la situation au plan déficit céréalier, et lorsqu'on regarde sur les 260 villages que compte le département, 257 villages ont été déclarés déficitaires et le déficit atteint souvent 95%. In the Sahel, that's West Africa, in fact, there was sufficient food, but not at the right places. So what we have done, together with an organization like World Food Program, is to mobilize the food, to buy it where there was a surplus, and to bring it to where there was a, a deficit. So that was the first step. Then the second step is to distribute the food to the families in need. C'est du super céréal plus. Ce produit est fabriqué en Italie, à Venise. Et euh, il prend deux mois pour arriver dans les ports. Et puis à peu près 15 jours, des ports jusqu'au Niger. C'est euh, la farine de soja qui est enrichie avec du sucre, euh, du, du lait en poudre, de l'huile et d'autres vitamines minéraux. C'est pour la prévention de la malnutrition pour les enfants de 6 mois à 23. Our activities have been uh, mostly focused, uh, of course, in the hospitals, and the, the cash and food is more oriented uh, through these partners uh, in, in the same areas. And very often, especially in the last months, uh, combined with what we call the blanket feeding. The blanket feeding provides food for children between six months uh, to two years. If we combine uh, this activity of blanket feeding uh, with cash contribution, yeah, you protect the whole family you, and so you ensure that there is indeed a, a higher probability uh, for them to be resistant and resilient uh, to this crisis. Sensibilisation, 
mantu bora kuli noko yi, etu bara kala bora ibo goro, e bora kam goro mu, iman ne, ine imadal la, iman don da ibora kiti. Si les populations sont suffisamment intelligentes pour faire face à toutes les situations possibles, c'est sûr qu'on peut faire face et au changement climatique et à la mauvaise gestion peut-être. Et également, il faut développer des ressources humaines de qualité. Et je pense que c'est une des stratégies qu'il faut beaucoup renforcer et dans l'espoir qu'on euh, puisse en tout cas sortir de cette situation de pays éternellement ou en tout cas permanemment en crise, de pays permanemment assistés. Le plus visible aspect, comme nous l'avons entendu, de la crise dans le Sahel est la food et la nutrition en sécurité. Mais la solution va bien au-delà de la availabilité et de l'accès à la nutrition food. Short, medium and longer term plans must be fully and purposefully integrated to ensure that the crisis of one year does not jeopardize the overall objective of building resilience. I think we all agree that we need to change our approach to chronic drought situations such as that in the Sahel at the moment by managing the risks and not the crisis. We need to strengthen livelihoods and we need to reduce vulnerabilities before the peak of the crisis. And focus on food security does not mean that we are deviating for overall strategy for Sahel because we know that food security is only one of the issues that are crucially important for Sahel. But if people have nothing to eat and have no access to food, that basically the situation is that it's not acceptable. That's why we particularly focus on access to food and nutrition. What happened today is quite remarkable. We got the countries from the Sahel region, the regional organizations like ECOWAS or SEALS, and then the United Nations, the NGOs, the donor governments, all coming together and all speaking the same language, all having the same uh, message. We must mobilize today, and today's meeting produced a total commitment of 1.2 billion dollars to fight the emergency, but also a recognition that we cannot go on like this, coming over and over and over with, with you know, a hand saying, give us money so we can, we can fight the emergency. We have to tackle the underlying causes as to why, why the Sahel falls in this trap of recurrent uh, hunger hitting the region. I go in area. They do what they call it. But when they are not getting money, they want to. They want to go into Shari. How one can go? I go to show them. I want to go rapid press to Congo. I go in area. No harm. Can I know me? I fight that no harm. Can I go there? I go Congo. I know that they don't do it.